let's take a peek inside my Math Fact Intervention Booklet. On the table here, you'll see a few materials that I like to keep handy. For me, for this intervention, I just have a basket where I have decks of cards, foam dice, spinners, markers, and bingo daubers. And I just keep those there all the time. That way, whatever day we happen to be doing in the book, our materials are there. For now, I'm gonna scoot them out of the way. We'll dive in the booklet and you'll see me reach off screen and grab those depending on the day and what our intervention is. So with each of my intervention booklets, if you're familiar with my reading or my math, the left-hand side of every day or every booklet looks the same. We're doing the same thing. So with this, I call it the math fact frenzy. And so I like to use hundreds charts, but you could definitely use number lines or touch points or counting on or students who like to use their fingers. So on this side of the page, I like to just give my students the opportunity to use their tools and use their resources to add, or in later weeks, subtract both horizontally and vertically. And as I flip through the book, you'll see that that really stays the same every day. That side of the page looks the same. So kids will be able to practice that skill using their hundreds chart or using their number line, whatever you know strategy you or your students prefer. But then on the right hand side of each booklet, we'll have just different activities to practice addition or subtraction um, in different fun and engaging ways. So here you'll play Math Fact Bingo. And so students will just use these numbers to fill out their chart. They can use whatever numbers they want. And um, sometimes if we're in a pinch, I might go through and write these out for them. And then I just use, I choose the flashcards that are included with this bundle. I just choose ones that would have these sums. Maybe they're things that were over here. Maybe they're ones that I know those students are working on. Whatever happens to be, I kind of pull those. And think there could be multiple facts that equal eight or multiple facts that equal 14 or really any of these. You can pull the fact or facts that you want. Maybe you want multiple that have an eight. Or maybe you only want one. That part is up to you. Over here, we use the numbers to create a fact family. And I think this is really important for students to really see and practice. Um, that way, as they're building their number fluency and memorizing these math facts, they realize that they work in different ways. I also think it's important for every booklet to include a word problem. And so with this, I like to think of this as we're going to draw a picture. So this says Megan has three pencils. I don't care if students draw sticks. I don't care if they draw very detailed pictures and really make them look like pencils. That part doesn't really matter to me as much as they are visualizing and working out these problems. Then if it's an addition book, you'll have an addition word problem. So they can really practice some of the things that you've been doing with their hundreds chart or with their number line. And then over here, it says her sister gave her one more. So maybe we draw another pencil and we really start visualizing that problem. And then down below it says, how many pencils does she have all together? So then we could use our picture to count. These, I try to keep very simple numbers so that they are um, able to be drawn in a quick period of time. We're not gonna draw 36 pencils or anything ridiculous, um, but four pencils. On day two, once again, you'll do your math facts in whatever strategy or whatever way you want your students to use. And then we're going to use a spinner. So with this, we'll have five plus and we'll spin and get four. So we would write five plus four, use our hundred chart, use our number line, use our fingers, use our touch points, whatever way we want to figure out nine. On day two, I also like to use a marker for matching. You could also have your students just use a pencil, whatever you would like them to do. But anytime we can use markers or highlighters, our kids love it. On day three, you'll go ahead with your math facts and then you'll roll a problem. So we'll roll five plus two, find the sum, eight plus four, find the sum, and so on. With subtraction, these are often reversed. That way you can roll the dice and subtract two or subtract three. Maybe you wanna use two dice 
whatever works for you. Um, subtraction, this section is a little more complicated. Then we use counting on. I think this is a really important skill for kids to practice, seeing that if I put nine in my head, I can count on nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, the answer is 14. Six plus four, I could say six, seven, eight, nine, 10. The answer is 10. Some students are able to do this all on their own. They don't need to be explicitly taught that but others need that explicit instruction and practice. On day four, we're gonna do a color by number, so students will solve the problems and color in, or in this case, we're gonna leave it blank because it's white, color in according to the color. Day five is always a favorite for my students where we use our bingo daubers. And so we are going to use our hundred chart, our number line, touch points, fingers, whatever strategy you want, and find the sums. It's been a while since I've used my bingo dauber and bingo daub the sums. This is always a favorite. They love that. Then we use our deck of cards and we deal up different problems. And so sometimes I make students deal their own. Sometimes they get to work with a partner. You can mix this up, but they always love cards. And so we can say, okay, down here I have eight plus five. Use your hundreds chart, use your fingers, whatever to solve. They could count the objects on your deck of cards and deal up another problem where then they would count or figure out how are they going to find the sum of nine plus four. These math interventions are effective and students really enjoy being able to play games. A lot of things that we often have in printables or different worksheets, um, but something that they can really look forward to and just get that math back practice in.